Typical, typical, typical pirates. You know, it, it it's hard to be frustrated and it's hard to be disappointed anymore when the same thing, the same song and dance keeps coming up series after series after series, season after season after season. So I, I can't really be upset. I can't really be disappointed because from the uh, two and a half games that I saw by the Pirates this weekend because my weekend was absorbed with uh, my girlfriend and the NFL draft. I just, I, I don't really have to come on here and give a full analysis because nothing I say in this video is any different than the things I've been saying about this team over the course of the past couple of weeks. Nothing. What's going on, everybody? Monday morning, it is Mac. Back with another video. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Instagram. Link is in the box below. Pirates drop a series in San Francisco to the Giants. We lose two out of three to them. Before that, we split a four-game series with Milwaukee at home after we had dropped six straight. And in the Brewers series, it looked like the bats were starting to pick up a little bit. It looked like that the Pirates were starting to figure it out a little bit offensively. O'Neill Cruz and Andrew McCutcheon had great series against Milwaukee. But then the Giants series came, and it's just more of the same. And it's not like the Pirates got blown out in this series. They lost two close games, two games that they should have won. Friday night, you, you had so many chances to win that game Friday night. So many bases loaded opportunities. So many times that you got runners on and you couldn't do jack with it. And uh, Friday night, I am solely putting that one on Derek Shelton, by the way. Why you pinch hit Rowdy Telez for Henry Davis only to put in Joey Bart in the bottom of the ninth in a scoreless game makes zero sense whatsoever. So that's yet another game that this bozo, that this clown, that this inept, whatever you want to call him, that we have as a manager has cost us this season alone. Saturday, Buckos win it by a final of 4-3 to three in extra innings. Back-to-back -back homers by Brian Reynolds and Key Brian Hayes in the top of the 10th inning won us that game. Before, you know, not before David Bednar, the most overrated closer in all of baseball, nearly cost us the game when he gave up a two run homer to make it a four to three game. This was after the Buckos took a four to one lead. And then Sunday's game, just so typical of this team. So typical. Jared Jones, I would say this was his. Worst start that he's had so far, but I still think that he pitched well enough for the Buckos to win. He got roughed up. He allowed three homers. He allowed back to back home or uh, three runs. He allowed back to back homers, I should say. But after that, he settled down and he was able to have a quality start. But of course, the Pirates just can never have a quality start result in a W because these bats. We're left in San Francisco, but really they were left elsewhere throughout the country. This offense is so unwatchable. And it's gotten to a point to where it's not a slump anymore. Okay? If it's been more than a week and you're still averaging less than four runs a game, that ain't a slump. That's a trend. And that's a reflection of the front office just neglecting the glaring issue at hand, which is Andy Haynes' offense is just not sustainable. Okay? Every single time, they're not hitting. The average is bad. 
You got players that are actually hitting below the Mendoza line, if that's even possible. They're not getting on base. When they do get on base, they're over-aggressive at the plate and they try and do too much with it. It's just too easy for the opposing pitchers. Way too easy. Because they're never in danger. They don't have to worry about pitch outs. And if they do allow a runner to get on, they know that all the Bucks are going to do is that they're just going to watch. They're, they're going to go fastball hunting. They're going to wait for the fastball that they love to hit, go right down the plate, and then they're going to swing at them. Breaking balls, change-ups, splitters, slurves, whatever you want to call it, they're just going to watch him whiz right past them. Just look like a batting statue right there with the bat perched up on their shoulders, not do anything whatsoever. They have the, the Pirates have no change with their attack and no change with their approach whatsoever. And they don't try to modify it. They don't try to change it. They're not swinging it. For, they're still not swinging at strikes. They're waiting for first fit. They're waiting for first pitch fastballs, as I said, and they don't change anything. What did the Giants do? They changed it. Jared Jones, a guy who averages twelve strikeouts per nine innings, may I mind you, a guy who's young and is just pounding the strike zone early on is hitting the upper 90s with his fastball. The Giants noticed that. So what did they do? Because the Giants were striking out and they were falling behind with Jared Jones, guess what? They were starting to get ahead of Jared Jones. They were being aggressive at the plate, and they were forcing him to use his secondary pitches. And as a result, it made Jared Jones get in an uncomfortable situation the Giants took advantage of it. Doesn't help either that Brian Reynolds can't see a, a, a lazy fly ball that a, a freaking pony leaguer can make. Just mental errors. It didn't come up as an error in the box score, but I've always said mental errors should count as errors. When you just give your team extra outs, I mean... <laughs> I'm just so tired of watching this team just act like it's still the first week of spring training. This is your future right here. This is your future right here, Ben Charrington. And if you keep this sack of crap known as Andy Haynes as the hitting coach past this season and you give Derek Shelton another chance, guess what? You're going to waste the potential that this that this team has. I don't want to hear the well, it's only 29 games in the season, Mac. Oh, you just got to be patient, Mac. Oh, the 2015 team got off to a got off to a slow start too, Mac. It's a long season. I don't want to hear that BS. This has been a two-week long trend that the Pirates have been in and they have not changed anything. Why? Because pitchers know what this team's approach is at the plate. They know how they handle fastballs. They know that they won't go after breaking balls. They know that they won't go after mistake pitches. They know that they are just fastball hunting and they will not be aggressive at the plate unless they see the number one pitch that they are comfortable with. And that's a reflection of our trash hitting coach and our absolutely even more trash can of a manager and Derek Shelton. And that's why you are now 14 and 15 since being nine and two. Unfreaking believable. Nine and two record. Best start since 1992. And you've gone five and freaking 13 since then. Five and 13. How we even managed to win two games against the Brewers, it, it just appalls me. And now, I mean, look, you, you, you stay in the Bay to take on the Oakland A's, okay? The A's aren't a good team. But I'm telling you, 
Are the A's really any different than us at this point? After all, the A's did win a series against us last year in Pittsburgh. So I can't even say, well, you know, we got the Oakland A's coming up. That's a series we should win. And then after that, we got the Colorado Rockies coming to Pittsburgh. That's a series we should win as well. Are those two teams really any different than how the Pirates are right now? I mean, sure, they're two of the worst teams in baseball. But like I said, are they any different than how the Pirates are right now? Henry Davis, I am getting closer and closer and closer to calling this guy a bust. The guy is, to, to say that he's not hitting well, is a massive understatement. And at this point, you got to send this guy down. You got to clear his head. You got to build his confidence up. You got to do something with him. The fact that you are putting him in, game in and game out, and him killing rallies is just a testament to how lazy that this management is. Send him down, give Joey Bart more playing time, and at this point, give Yasmani Grandal. Some playing time. When Yasmani Grandal is healthy and he's ready to play this season, give him more playing time over Henry Davis. Send him back down because he's just not cutting it at the plate. I mean, yeah, he 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 has a couple of good defensive plays here and there, but is he consistent with it? No, he's not. Send him down. Give Joey Bart more playing time. Joey Bart is a very good two-way catcher. He can hit. He's got a good swing. He's got pop in the swing without trying to hit a homer. He's just a good contact hitter. He's a smart hitter. And he's a pretty good catcher as well. That was a good find that Ben Sherrington had. Give Joey Bart more playing time. Rowdy Telez is absolutely useless. Do you know that in Sunday's game, that was his first extra base hit game I believe he's had since the Marlins series all the way back in Easter? That is just mind-blowing how a major league player can go a month without having an extra base hit. He's totally useless. And yet every day, Shelton continues to put him at first. Shelton pinch hits him. And Shelton continues to just put him in the lineup because, oh, I, I know he'll figure it out soon. Derek Shelton is a dumbass. And like I said, Five and thirteen since being nine and two. And it's a miracle that the Cardinals dropped a series to the Mets. Because I'm telling you right now, St. Louis wins that series. This team goes from first to worst in three weeks. And it is just a crime that this team that this team has to be subjected to this offense because I'm telling you right now if it wasn't for the following players I swear to you this team would be among one of the worst teams in baseball if it was not for Mitch Keller Jared Jones Martin Perez um let's see who else Mitch Keller Martin Perez Jared Jones at times Bailey Falter and Stratton, if it was not for those five guys, I swear to you, the Pirates would probably be on the same level as the freaking 6 and 22 Chicago White Sox for being the worst team in baseball. I mean that so much just by the way that this offense is, the way they continue to squander quality start after quality start after quality start. I swear to you, that would be the case. This team would be right there with the White Sox and Marlins for being the worst team in baseball. It's amazing how this team isn't in last place. It really is. Like I said, Oakland and Colorado coming up. Are they any different than we are right now? Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I've gone on enough. This is Mac checking on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.